Cervical cancer is a type of cancer that occurs in the cells of the cervix. The cervix is the lower part of the uterus that connects to the vagina. Think of it as the gateway to the womb. This cancer doesn't just appear overnight. It develops slowly, often over many years. Abnormal cells first begin to grow on the surface of the cervix. This initial stage is called dysplasia or precancer. If these precancerous cells are not found and treated, they can eventually turn into cancer. The good news is that this slow progression gives us a powerful window of opportunity for detection and intervention, making it one of the most preventable and treatable cancers when caught early. This disease can affect anyone with a cervix, which includes women transgender men, non-binary individuals. While it can occur at any age, it is most frequently diagnosed in women between the ages of 35 and 44. It is less common in women younger than 20. However, the seeds of cervical cancer are often planted much earlier in life. The cellular changes that lead to this cancer are almost always caused by a very common virus, which we will discuss in detail. Understanding who is at risk is the first step toward empowerment. Let's talk about the main driver behind almost all cases of cervical cancer. It's a virus called the human papillomavirus or HPV. There are more than 100 different types of HPV. Many of them are harmless. They might cause common warts on your hands. However, a small number of these HPV types are considered high risk. These are the ones linked to cancer. HPV 16, HPV 18. Together, they're responsible for about 70% of all cervical cancers and precancerous lesions. Understanding this link transforms how we think about preventing this disease. HPV is incredibly common. It is the most common sexually transmitted infection. Nearly every sexually active person will get HPV at some point in their lives if they don't get the vaccine. Most of the time, the body's immune system clears the infection on its own, usually within one or two years. You might never even know you had it. The problem arises when a high-risk HPV infection doesn't go away. This is called a persistent infection. These persistent, long-lasting infections can cause the cells of the cervix to change, eventually leading to cancer. Having HPV does not mean you have cancer. It also doesn't mean you will definitely get cancer. It simply means you are at a higher risk. While a persistent HPV infection is the main culprit, it's not the whole story. Other factors can increase a woman's risk of developing cervical cancer. These are often called cofactors because they can influence whether an HPV infection will persist and progress to cancer. One of the most significant of these is a weakened immune system. If your body's natural defenses are compromised, it's harder to fight off the HPV infection. This can be due to medications that suppress the immune system, such as those taken after an organ transplant, or due to conditions like the human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV. Smoking is another major risk factor. The harmful chemicals in tobacco enter the bloodstream and have been found in cervical mucus. They can damage the DNA of cervix cells, increasing cancer risk after HPV. Research shows women who smoke are about twice as likely as non-smokers to get cervical cancer. This is a risk factor you can control. Quitting smoking is one of the best things you can do for your overall health. Long-term use of oral contraceptives, often called the pill, has also been linked to a slightly increased risk. Studies have shown that women who have used birth control pills for five years or more have a higher risk. However, this risk appears to decrease again after you stop taking them. It's important to discuss this with your doctor. Having given birth to many children, particularly three or more, is associated with a higher risk. A diet low in fruits and vegetables might also contribute. It's about your immune system, your lifestyle choices, and your overall well-being. The single most important reason cervical cancer is so preventable is routine screening. Screening tests can find problems before they turn into cancer. For decades, the cornerstone has been the PAP test, also called a pap smear. During this simple procedure, a small sample of cervical cells is collected. Those cells are sent to a lab and examined under a microscope. The lab looks for abnormalities or precancerous changes. It's quick and highly effective at catching problems early. Regular pap tests have dramatically reduced cervical cancer rates where available. A newer tool is the HPV test, often done at the same time as the pap using the same sample. Instead of abnormal cells, the HPV test looks for high-risk HPV types. That lets us detect risk even earlier. Screening strategies, PAP test alone, HPV test alone, primary HPV testing, both tests together, co-testing. 
How often you are screened depends on your age, your health history, and previous test results. If your test is abnormal, please don't panic. Abnormal rarely means cancer. It usually means cell changes or high-risk HPV is present. If a diagnosis of cervical cancer is made, it is important to know there are highly effective treatments available. The specific treatment plan will depend on several factors. These include the stage of the cancer, how large it is and whether it has spread, your age and overall health, your desire to have children in the future. Your medical team will create a personalized treatment plan. The main types of treatment are surgery, radiation therapy, chemotherapy. Often a combination is used. Surgery is common for early stage disease. Very small early cancers. Cone biopsy might be enough. Slightly larger but still confined. Hysterectomy may be recommended. More extensive cases. Radical hysterectomy removes nearby tissues as well. Surgeons aim to make procedures less invasive and preserve fertility when possible. Radiation therapy uses high energy rays to kill or stop cancer cells. Internal radiation called brachytherapy places a radioactive source near the tumor. While these treatments can have side effects, your medical team has many ways to help you manage them and maintain your quality of life. We have talked about detecting and treating cervical cancer, but the ultimate goal is to prevent it from ever starting. We have two incredibly powerful tools to do this, the HPV vaccine and regular screening. The HPV vaccine is a true medical breakthrough. It trains your immune system to fight the most dangerous HPV types. It works best before someone becomes sexually active. Recommended for preteens, boys and girls at age 11 or 12. Can be given as early as age 9. Recommended up to age 26, if not previously vaccinated. Ages 27 to 45 may still benefit. Discuss with your doctor. The vaccine prevents new HPV infections. It does not treat existing ones. Even if vaccinated, continue regular cervical screening. The vaccine covers the most common high-risk HPV types, but not all. Think of it like wearing a seatbelt and having airbags. You want both protections. Regular screening is the second pillar. Follow guidelines for pap tests and HPV tests. These tests find precancerous cells so doctors can remove them early. Adhering to the screening schedule is one of the most important things you can do. Quit smoking. Eat a diet rich in fruits and vegetables and use condoms consistently. Combined with vaccination and screening, these build a comprehensive defense system. The future of cervical cancer prevention and treatment is incredibly bright. Researchers and doctors around the world are making remarkable progress. One of the most exciting areas is the global effort to eliminate cervical cancer as a public health problem. In 2020, the World Health Organization launched a global strategy. It set clear targets for countries to meet by 2030. 90% of girls fully vaccinated with the HPV vaccine by age 15. 70% of women screened with a high-performance test by age 35 and again by 45. 90% of women with cervical disease receiving treatment. This united global front is a powerful source of hope. On the screening front, technology is making tests more accessible and accurate. One major advance is HPV self-sampling. That sample is sent to a lab for HPV testing. This approach overcomes cultural sensitivities, lack of time, and difficulty traveling to a doctor's office. It can dramatically increase screening rates in remote and underserved communities. Scientists are using artificial intelligence, or AI, to analyze screening results. AI makes the process faster and potentially more accurate. In treatment, we are seeing the rise of immunotherapy. Certain drugs, called checkpoint inhibitors, release the brakes on immune cells. Immunotherapy is showing promise for advanced or recurrent cervical cancer. Clinical trials are ongoing, testing new immunotherapy drugs and combinations. There is a growing focus on theranostics and precision medicine, bringing us closer to a world where no woman has to die from cervical cancer.